So welcome along, Patrick. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. And I, guys, for everyone watching at home, watching these guys blossom and grow, it's incredible. I think star quality from day one, and, and now they've got their own TV show. My God. <laughs> No one was surprised. No one was surprised. <laughs> have, faith, isn't it? Have, faith, okay. have faith in the process and keep doing what you love doing and then anything's possible. And, and, and work bloody hard like you guys did. Huh? You've got to work bloody hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you've got to put the work in. It doesn't just come to you, does it? Definitely not. Definitely not. So, um, Baz, what do you want to do first? Well, I just want Patrick to introduce himself, tell us a little bit about yourself where you started from, where you are today, and how that journey looks to us. And then we're going to go into a little bit of meditation, um, some questions about meditation, and then perhaps you could do a little bit of a practical meditation with us a little bit down the line. Yeah, that's see amazing. How we with that. Yeah. Awesome. Guys, thank you so much for having me on board. Um, I met Barry and Laura uh, in 2013. Um, I, I, I was part of a behavioral change coaching company called Body Transformation Academy. And um, I'd always been interested in that looking within, like I've always been into that. Um, and, and boy, did, did things evolve over time. As in, I, I, guess, I guess what, what really kind of got me going was I got very into Vedanta, which is an ancient philosophy. It's the intellectual tradition of Hinduism. And, and, and they say that there's three yogas. If you want to, guys, become enlightened, if you want to elevate yourself, there's three different things that, that we're looking at in life. And one is Gnani Yoga, which is seeing what's real and unreal, what's permanent and what's impermanent. What, another thing was karma, was doing good acts um, and thinking of the heart. But the third part was part which, which I didn't do much of at all, admittedly. It's called bhakti, which is the feeling of oneness. So guys, you know, as in, let's say we're all one, all the great teachers will talk about the feeling of oneness. Um, and just, to, you know, as in, if, if you guys turn to your fitness out there, and I know if, you, if you're at the Rock Solid Crew, you know a little bit about that, but it, it, it'd be like if you did your legs and if you did your chest, so you're just like this, but you didn't do your back, so your chest, you're all hunched over and, and it, it's, you're contorted, you're, you're misaligned. And when I did the meditation, it was getting that feeling of oneness. I was able to be like properly stand up straight and upright in life and, and like really happy about it. Um, and how did that happen first? It was, it was um, so, so we were going for several years with the Body Transformation Academy. We we're winning awards, going to parliament and whatnot. Um, and my uh, co-founder, a guy, Lazo, he, uh, he's a genius, very, very bright guy. And a guy called Dr. Joe Dispenza, who's, um, who's actually very famous right now. As Miley Cyrus had him on her Instagram and everything. Um, and you, you probably you probably heard about him, and I know Barry and Laura are big fans. But Dr. Joe chose my business partner Lazo to be hand trained by him. Um, so it was like a super special program. It was uh, the X Peeps, and, and they, they were they wanted to just how can we get help people get deeper results? So you know, Barry and Laura were talking about it. Before the, the call, we were just having a little chat about, about their experiences. Um, and Dr. Joe was always innovating of how to get people at a deeper, more profound experience. And so he went off to Minnesota, worked with Dr. Joe in Germany, and he had all these brain scans. And, and it, it was fascinating. I, I, was, I don't know what he was doing. I don't know what. I was just running the business. I was just cracking on. Um, but he was just like, oh, my God. Because he knew Dr. Joe from when it was like seven people in a room in Bloomsbury, London, you know, just like when there was no one. And, and guys, if you know anything about Dr. Joe right now, he'll have 2,000 people in a room. Yeah. And I do it every bloody week. Um, so so his, his profile has um, grown exponentially, let's say. And, and what he did was he put together like a pilot course, a pilot course just to, to test, you know, so how would, because he sent out the best coaches in the world, 
as in like, oh, like Lazo is top, top body coach, like very, very, well, he used to do it anyway. Um, and, uh, I, you know, in overnight, it was like, yeah, I had to build learn this stuff professionally. I had to be a professional meditator. I was like, oh, God. Um, because I was so in my head, I was so philosophical. I was like, meditation, should I insert unpleasant word here? You know, um, it, it, was, uh, it was nonsense. Because, because philosophically, um, and a lot of people have heard this before, um, and they said, well, I can't clear my mind of all thoughts, isn't that? So I can't meditate. And guys, scripturally, that, that actually is what they would say. Is like they would say in, in the Vedic scriptures, it's the last, when you have the last thought and your last desire is to become one with God, then you would meditate on that last thought until you extinguish the mind. So, like, it's highly advanced spiritual practice. However, Nowadays, you know, we, we've kind of repurposed the word to mean creating that relationship with yourself and, and becoming more introspective. So, so, so guys, I, you know, I, we can teach meditation in two minutes. It's, it's go, um, and just having your mind tracking it. Like, th that's all it is. But, but guys, it's, that, it's the work that you do beforehand, which is the challenging part, okay? So, so, so what, what we're doing is, we're cleaning out the emotions as in that that's a lot of what we're doing in the meditations so that we can focus on the thoughts that come up and um, and, and we get we get more higher desires of, of things in life and, and become less self-centered does that make sense so far yeah 100 yeah so, so so what happened was with um i i worked with lots of um you know ceremonies Ceremonial teachers, um, but also with, with doing the Dr. Joe course, as in it was the most incredible experience. It was the most incredible experience because he's got this great behavioral change model, with, which it's it's very adapted for the Western mind because guys, we're so analytical, we're so questioning, and we have this big tension between where we are in our mind and our hearts because because the heart is like. There's certain things that we just know to be true, yeah. but, but we, we second guess ourselves and we, we don't trust ourselves. And with the work that Dr. Joe was doing, it was, it was like opening up and going beyond the mind. Um, and and guys, you know, he's in, to, to hear him on it, like he's, in, he's got great books, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself is probably my favorite on it. Um, but what happened was I had a very transformative journey and, and Dr. Joe, he's got a, an incredible behavioral change model on and how to overcome, uh, we, Dr. Joe says that we become neurochemically addicted to certain behaviors. And yeah. it's just, it's absolutely fascinating. And, and through that, I was able to get rid of my addiction to anger and to fear and anxiety. So, you know, Laz, you know, she, if you've been around here for a little while, she, she talks a little bit about that. Um, and I didn't know that I had anxiety. I didn't know, because guys, um, my understanding of anxiety after doing this work is that it's a sneaky bugger of an emotion that, that hides among other emotions and it pretends that you're more something or something, but it's really anxiety. And, and what I, I used, I used to like smoking weed, guys. I, 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 smoke, uh, I smoke weed nearly every day. And for during periods of my life, and I was like, oh, I'm just being philosophical, you know, I just want to make this movie better, you know, or this food, like, you know, it's just, this, it's, you know, I'm, I'm reflecting. It's like, no, no, Patrick, you are anxious. You are smoking weed because you are anxious on a, on a profound level. And when I searched within myself and I saw the source of anxiety, I pulled it out. Wow. One, and once the anxiety went, I didn't want to smoke weed anymore because, because I saw just like, because when it wasn't um, masking my anxiety, what it was doing was just feeling sluggish, I'm eating way too much food, I'm getting fat, I'm getting slow, and my mind was foggy. So the, 
like that's just one such thing about when you can you can go in and, and you can you can see a lot of your behavioral addictions and and it was about reconnecting with yourself and 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 i i just had a moment and it's, it's unforgettable it was it's nearly three years ago where i just connected and it's my own and guys it's this is not an objective thing is isn't there's a lot of people out here you know and, and they, they, they may be atheists and, and guys i'm with you i'm with you you cannot objectively see god you cannot objectively see god it is not um, an objective experience it's a subjective experience so it, it's only a, it's only a, an unfolding of your own personal understanding of your reality and and, and what made you and, and i had that experience of like getting to whatever that thing is and a lot of the things that i thought that i had to do in the world i didn't have to do them anymore because i'd gotten that feeling of oneness so so I got that little anchor, guys. I got that little yeah. anchor. And with the meditation, when, when we go in there, we can have certain experiences whereby we can feel things that we can't normally feel in our day-to-day -day life. But once yeah. we get that little anchor in there, it grows. And, and like it, it, it's, it's like um, a common mentor of, of Baz and Laz and I, a guy called David Thompson. He's a, he's a sales genius. But he's always writing something about neural networks, about when you were crossing the chasm, you have to throw a grappling hook, right? And then you like shimmy across and it's all dangerous and uncertain. But then when you're understood, you throw another one back and then you got two and it's a little bit better and then you keep going back and forth and then you get a little boat bridge and then you got a proper bridge and a wooden bridge and then you got a bloody motorway and then you can get there any second you yeah. want. And you had that but, but, little niche. Little I had that little niche, guys. I had that little niche. And, and, and what happens then is that you can start working towards that in your own personal practice and, and unfolding it. So, so guys, I'm um, telling you about what I do now because I lead the largest um, meditation community in London. And uh, we get together 60 to 100 people and, and set the scene for them to have that personal experience within themselves of where things can be where their life can be um, and then you know I work with people personally to get them there um, in a timely manner you know so so, so, so guys that's what I'm doing right now does that make sense yeah Wonderful. absolutely I love your journey Patrick how it started with the body and helping people transform their body and their business and now you've just gone like shoo, straight over to this side and it's all about in here. Because when we look at the body, it's all about ext extrovert, isn't it? How do I look and how does the world perceive me? But realistically, we want it the other way around, don't we? We want to be able to go in with us so we can see the world in a different way. Would that be right in saying that? And Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and guys, there's, there's a... Lots of, I'm coming yet, and there's a frequently misunderstood thing of extroversion and introversion. People think extroverts like duck, 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 and an introvert's like, oh, I like to be on my own. It's not. It's extrovert is when you are focused on the external world, and the introvert is focused on his or her internal world. Mm -hmm. And because guys, there's far more in our internal world. Like is, is it, and, and, and guys, the, the, the pleasures go up and up and up and up. So, so guys, just like you're at home and, and guys, um, you'll relate to me. I was like food addicted. I was food addicted. Um, I, I couldn't, like, if it's more than three hours, I would become a very nasty individual. <laughs> Angry. <laughs> oh my God, I was a psycho. Um, but... Once you start tapping in, as in, like, there's more pleasure in the emotional high of giving someone food, and then, and then and then there's a, and there's a higher high of teaching someone about food and helping them understand food of seeing what food truly is, and then it's like there's there's all these levels, but but none of them are material external ones. They they are internal ones isn't so like emotional is just above it and then you've got the you've got the psychological as an of being able to teach someone give something back that way and then the highest one is, is of the great teachers of, of you know the jesus's the muhammad's the the lord krishna's the the buddha's it's it's about 
just being that perfect example of how, how to live and 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 um and th that's kind of you know that's kind of what we're working for. and guys i i know i know we're going there but with barry and laura we go there we we yeah. just go there and, and we don't pull any punches and we just say it as it is and, and, and guys that's kind of that's kind of you know what that journey is and, and we are all on this journey to a greater or less first or or when we're aware of it to a greater or lesser extent, we're all on it. So let me ask you this then, because a lot of people are really resonating with this now, I know. And the one big question that I have is, what is meditation and how would you describe it? Because a lot of people think they know it's like, oh, it's mindfulness, oh, it's focusing on your breathing. But how would you describe what meditation is? So just because I'm in fussy, I'll go back to the, the scriptural thing. It's, it's when that single pointed focus on one thought to the exclusion of all other thoughts, like is it, that's textbook. That's yeah. textbook. However, guys, like there's a lot of people out there and they're calling things meditation. It's not really meditation. It's, 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 it's become a catch-all term. It's become a catch-all term. So, so guys, the thing about it, don't be getting fighting about it, whatever it is. It's, 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 it's your personal relationship with yourself. Because, guys, I'm a little bit OCD on, on, on some terms. And I know Laws knows a little bit about that as well. And, and um, we can get caught up in terminology, but, but it, it's just word think. The reality is, can you connect to yourself? As in the, 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 that's the whole, that's the whole thing. Can you connect yourself? Because, you know, as I said, the scripturally, is, and these guys, they'll say you, the self is everything. It's the universe. It's the, it's the entire thing. And, and that's what we're always trying to do. Um, and it's so connecting to your heart and, and be, can you be in your heart? Um, so, 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 so I'm giving you a bit of a funny one there, there, it, it, because we, we do use the word meditation it's a bit, a little bit contorted right now, and it's doing some gymnastics first, and that's okay. That's okay because if it's helping you to create a relationship with yourself and help you love yourself more, you're doing it. You know, you're doing it, and 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 just for me, my personally, it's, it's when my personal definition of like my meditation practice, like what I do every morning. I got up today, you know, before five to do it because there's certain times of the day when it's more, more conducive. And for me, it's when I can hear myself as the mind has to unload. It's like, oh, so-and-so's winding up. Well, what's the solution to that? Da, 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 da. Blah, 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 blah. But, but eventually, it's, it's when, when the mind is kind of exhausted. Like, okay, you know, you've had your talk. You know, let's, let's, let's get to business here. Um, and I will push my mind on my breath. So going up and down, up and down. So, because you got to keep the mind distracted, and that's what the OM is about. So, you keep the mind at the OM, and then I just connect with that feeling of who I am. And, and guys, I'm not saying that that's going to be easy for you because it's like it's like a pond, right? It's like a pond with which got a lot of moss on the surface. Yeah. So. So we can pull some moss off and we can see a little bit of the water, but then more moss just goes in. It just, it just fills it back up again, okay? Um, and then you put some more moss out and you see something and you're like, oh, wow, you're excited. And then it, pulls, pulls, it, it, it just comes back in, it closes back up again. And we keep doing that. We keep taking that moss away every day until we see and we're like, oh. And then, and then a little bit of a glimmer of something that you see in your life. And, it's 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 just incredible and i might just have a little bit less moss currently this lifetime you know and you might have been a meditation master in another lifetime but but you forgot about it so so guys it's about rediscovering that and, and that's what i'm going to say that's that's what, that's why i'm not getting pinned down on what meditation is because it it means a lot of different things to a lot of people i wouldn't like to offend anyone because it's essentially it's your relationship with you I love it's, that. It's a daily practice of you being with you, being able to sit still, whether it's 10 minutes, five minutes, an hour, two hours. It's, this is the way I see it. It's time for me to be with me, whether that's in my thoughts or trying to decipher them or just being without thought. But it's that 
total time I spend with myself. Would you say that's got right? 100%. Yeah. Sorry. 100%. I want to just go back a little bit. You spoke about the heart, and this really, really interests me. You say about opening your heart and being with your heart. Can you explain a little bit more about that for us? Oh, guys, I'm, and, and, and like, I hope you don't think I'm like a bit of a miscreant, but, but guys, I, I, I'm just using these examples because cause, cause I, I know that, that they're, they're, they're easier for, they're relatable for people to understand. Um, I was like, I was a really angry guy. I was really like fiery, angry person. Um, and guys, and, and, and we're going to go into definitions here, just, just because this is the most helpful definition you ever get. Um, you are created of desires. You know, they, you know, they all say desires, well. So you are, it bubbles up, right? Into, into, into your, as in whatever that desire is, we have a desire for, I don't know, clothes or for peace and quiet or for a beautiful relationship or or any of these things that, that we may possibly want. And then it, these desires will bubble up into our personality. So my personality is Patrick, and you got Laura, and you got Barry, and you, and you have yourselves. And these are your personalities, just a temporary tool that you use to get around this reality, okay? And the desires will come up and still be like, oh, wouldn't mind, wouldn't mind an ice cream, right? And then we will get a thought flow. Because we might not have the ice cream straight away. We might. It's like, oh, well, I'm, I'm watching my figure. Maybe I will maybe won't have it today, but I might have it this week. And we flow goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you're thinking about it. And then it becomes, we become attached to the idea of the experience of ice cream. Yeah. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then it becomes a desire. So, so guys, then it's like, oh, wow, it's, it's real. You know, it's like, it's really strong. They're really, really strong, you want that. And then someone says, oh, the shop is out of the ice cream, which you like. So, and then you go ballistic. You yeah. go ballistic. I mean, if so, they're out of my, my favorite ice cream, I would definitely go ballistic. Exactly. If they don't have salted caramel laws, I go mad. And, How and, did you know that? How did you know? How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's incredible, right? And. And then we get confused. We're like, oh, as in, what is going on here? Why, how could you not have the salted caramel? And then, and then we get deluded. So it goes kind of anger, desire, desire interrupted. And then we have confusion and we have delusion. Like, there are souls. What terrible people. I hate them. You know, so, so we just go to like, off oh, on, on a mad one. Yeah. And, 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 and that is how anger is created from desires being interrupted so i know if you guys as the lauren barry you guys are interested in the real talk and, and really processing your emotions so so you know i am not the only person to bring angry out there but but i was a very angry person there's a lot of things that i wanted in life and many desires that were not being met and it made me very angry and, and anger will close your heart and you'll close your heart. Um, it'll just like get this tight little ball. Isn't and, and and think about it like you ever see someone's cerebral palsy and, and they have the, the, the limbs can be like yeah. twisted as in um, and you know it looks very painful. And, and that was kind of what was going on with my heart. And mm. I didn't really so I you know the emotional processing goes to you know like it's like a you need to go this person needs to go to the physiotherapist and yeah. and the person doesn't go to the physiotherapist very often it's very painful when their heart opens because those muscles have been strained in this particular position for a very long time so yeah. whenever they go it's just misery right but if the person does the exercise every day on their own it becomes yeah. pleasant and like they may regain the use of the hand or or whatever it is um and uh you know here's where i get naughty it's like guys i i had some uh some you know mdma and they, they call it molly on the streets you know and this is years ago and, and and it was just the most unpleasant thing in the world for me because i was so used to having my heart closed yeah. that when my heart was wrenched open it was way too much it's so overwhelming it was so overwhelming. So guys, today at the end of the call, we're going to go through a technique which will 
open your heart gently and it's something that you can do several times a day like and it, it, and you do it in the gentle way um but in that in the heart the heart is what it's like it's, it's like what you want it's what you really want and guys sometimes we get so caught up in the mind because the mind is, is great for telling us how to get it right but but if you have it modeled and you don't understand who's talking you'll think that you want something that you don't actually want and then you'll get it and you'll you spend a lot of time getting it and like oh i never wanted that in the first place my god i waste my time and and, and you like like you can you can do something really really substantial but it came from a mind level not a heart level we need to have the heart and the mind speaking because because the mind it's, it's a it's a great servant but it's a terrible master yeah it's a terrible master and, and like we think about it in like and guys i use a lot of metaphors just because it's easier to understand okay. Love metaphors. we have the 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 horse and carriage so imagine we've like 10 horses right like you know you're gonna you're getting somewhere you got 10 horses on your carriage, you're, you're getting somewhere. And we need to have that self-control, which is the, the little, sorry guys, I, 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 the, 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 the steering. The reins. Um, the reins, the reins, sorry. Um, and we need, to, we need to be able to, to use the reins to control the mind because, because the mind is in those horses, they can get you somewhere fast, right? Or they can go berserk and go off the side of the road yeah. Like go outside of the bank and kill you, or they can sit in their backsides eating, you know, grass on the side of the road and do nothing for you. And, and guys, that is the relationship that we have in our with our mind. We we, we wanna we wanna get those reins. We we really wanna get those reins. And and it, it takes a little bit of time, but but it's it's using it's it's coming from the heart. As in, so when we when we go into the heart of what the heart wants, we can work on using the mind to get us there but because we need to open up that communication with the heart because without that um you could end up doing things that you really don't care truly about it and um and when i was 23 years and i i um I, I sat down, I was burning, I was burning. I can't remember, so I was very angry. I said, guys, if, if, if I don't figure this out, I'm gonna kill myself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I just, I can't live in this way. It's, it's too painful. But I sat down and, and you know, as in, and with the things I'm doing today, which is helping people process their emotions and, and find themselves, is the thing that I came to me and it came from my heart. And it was, um, it was the most incredible experience and, and when you come from that right place, you do, you, also, you, you do the thing that's right for you because I had my mind saying, oh, Patrick, I'm going to help you like help companies raise finance. Like that was, that was literally a side job I tried to do before. I was like, I know nothing about finance. But the mind was like, oh, well, you know, you feel inferior. So this might make you feel good enough. You know, let's do this. And it's like complete waste of time, symbolic. I, I, I'm not an accountant, I have no training in finance. And guys, the mind will take in all these things and, 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 and wind you up and take the mickey out of you. So guys, today, like I'm, I'm, I, my whole thing about it is come from the heart and, and when we come from the heart, you can never go wrong. And like when you do your thing, when you do you, you can never be wrong. Even if it's not the most high status thing or the, the, when you do you, that's it. Yeah. It makes so much sense because me personally, I've been in my head for so long and I see other people doing things well. They've got the cars, they've got the bikes, they do the holidays. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. And it's all coming from here because I want what they've got because I perceive it to bring me joy and it's all this external thing. But since I've been doing the meditation and understanding this a bit more, I'm getting congruency between heart and mind now. And I see what they're doing, but I think that's, that, that, that would be nice to have, but it's not going to be bring me joy. And this, this is just like, wow, you just cleared this whole thing up for me. I'm not going to be looking at people going, oh, he's got a nice car. I want that. He's got the holidays. I want that. I want what I want. And I want it to come from the right place. And do you know what, Patrick, as well? Um, like people are really resonating with this and you've just helped one lady like they said the back and forth makes sense because as you say the mind is like runaway horses 
um, and we think that we want the ice cream, but really it's not what we want in our heart, it's just in our head. And, you know, one lady has said, this is quite emotional for me because I realise I'm angry quite often. And I actually feel quite emotional seeing that she's made that connection from just having that chat. And people are saying, I'm sat here nodding. Um, do you know what I mean? Out of this, I'm grateful for the time um, to enjoy being a human rather than a human doing and going with the flow. So it's just... That's magic. And do you know what, Patrick? I've had a personal experience of from the heart when i was doing a meditation i actually this is really trippy okay people so <laughs> i actually felt i was a baby and i was reborn again and i was in my mum's arms with my umbilical cord still t attached and i felt in here unconditional love it was like i was my mum looking down and feeling just love and that was just such an amazing thing to feel just from going within and looking at opening my heart do you know what I mean absolutely um you know so literally what you're saying everybody's resonating with it and they're just loving it and the way you're putting it is just so so good um and as you said when we meditate we don't feel normal things like we feel in everyday life like the chatter up here we connect within. We, we work on connecting within at least. We guys. work yeah. on it. We, we work we're, on we're, it. We're, yeah. all on that. we're all working. And guys, these are not my words. I am relaying to you merely from my teachers. Uh, I, I, I'm a student of Vedanta, V E D A N T A. And this is Swami Parthasarathy. These are, like, these are metaphors that are passed down to us from the teachers. I, I, I am part of the lineage. Um, this is not, I, I'm. I'm just merely paying it forward. It's not me. I, said, I do not lay claim to any of this knowledge, um, but I have internalized little bits of it. And, and, and to yeah. that extent, that is what I am relaying to you. But I, I, I didn't come up with any of this stuff. I'm merely but, relaying it, okay? But nobody ever really does. I mean, let's, let's face it, all ideas are, are out there, but what's most important for our guys is your experience and how it's impacted you. And that is unique. But also, it's the way you talk about it, Patrick. And like, if I listen to somebody else talking about the same subject, I might not resonate with them. I might not understand their terminology. But the way you're bringing it across is translating what... The elders have taught down the lineage and it's come to you and now you're talking about it to us to understand it in a different language, which is fantastic. So I've got a question for you then. Why is meditation so important right now? I mean, it's always important, right? It's always important. But why do you think it's so important right now? Um, going back to the teachers, they speak about this this large and so, so there's lots of cycles going on we've got the moon going around and, and guys you know if you're a lady out there you, you know the effect the moon has on you and and, and the moon affects all the water in the world as in um, it, it brings tides up and down and, and you know surprise surprise you're 80 percent water so and the moon has an effect on our emotional state of being okay um, because water has a memory. Water is a memory. Um, so we are in the part of a vast cycle and, and what they call it, the teachers call it the Aquarian age. So it's in, so this is recently, 2020, we had the second degree of the Aquarian age. And it started in like 1948, 1952. And, and what it is, is there is a, the, if you look, if you have a little knowledge of astrology, you know that Aquarians, it's, um, it's a lot of knowledge, it's a sharing of knowledge, it's an opening of knowledge. We see the internet and we see all these great teachers during this, during this time base, they're all opening their doors, they're all giving their knowledge freely. As in, historically, it was all closed and locked away, okay? But this is a new age. Um, and as we're going into the second degree of Aquarius, like as in, Aquarius is a very community, humanitarian-oriented way of life, okay? And, and um, the teachers are saying that it is time for people to see that life is more valuable than business and money. 
Ah, okay. We are having this situation in order to reflect on that lesson because we get as in you see, running around and getting the bikes and the ice creams and the cars. Is it maybe that's not as important as our relationship with ourselves and and. Listen, it went over my head at the beginning, but it's like it's 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 this incredible time for us all to to reset. So it, it's a big cleaning of humanity, of of we're cleaning the slate and the way of things that we were doing it. Um, so that's kind of from the teacher, what the teachers are saying of they're describing what's going on right now, and and like. And guys, you know, as in, please don't get offended out there. Uh, is, I'm just repeating someone else's words, but um, they talk about cause and effect, you know, and, and, and what other is called karma. And they say that, you know, whenever these things happen, there can be cause effect between, um, you know, the way we treat the planet and the way we treat animals. Because if, if we kill animals, as in, you know, as in, because we, because we don't get away with anything. Like, you know, if, we, if we're on a diet and we put the ice cream into our mouth and the biscuits, there is an effect, you know? There, there is. is an and it's inescapable, cause and effect. It's inescapable, you know? As in, if you don't put your pants on before you go outside for the day, you will have a very interesting effect, which may be undesirable and and and, and Laz's old colleagues might have to put you away you know <laughs> so, there's a, there's a cause and effect to everything and and, and my teacher Swamiji was talking about you know and our treatment of animals that some of that is coming back on us um, and, and there's, there's a lot of these things and it's just to avoid putting out badness because guys, that's all you can do personally, you know, and people want to tell everyone else what to do without making any changes themselves, you know, there's that funny meme of like, you know, who wants change? And everyone's like, yeah, who wants to change? And it was like, everyone's gone. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's a little bit of that. So, so, so uh, that's kind of what's going on. It's, 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 we're being given an opportunity to avoid a much harder lesson. Yeah. Yeah. We're given like is it because it, if we don't internalize what's happening right now yeah something worse will be in store for us to wake us up so guys this experience is to wake up yeah yeah to wake up okay. wake up it's a nice gentle wake up call you get to sit home with your family with people you love um, and and guys i know it's difficult for people out there you know i'm self-employed as well but I lost 90% of my income in, uh, in, in the stroke of a pen. Um, but, it, you know, guys, it, when, when it's time to focus on the gratitude and the largesse of life and the things that we do have, you know, because it's, in, it's that extroverted focus on material, the, the material, and, and, and it's kind of seen as, well, like, my teacher's always saying that, I complained that I had no shoes until I met a man who had no feet. Mm, yeah. That's, that's powerful. Yeah, that I've is. just got goosebumps that with that bit. powerful. So, so, so it, it, it's, it's what these guys are saying as in, as in like, I'm not going to pretend life like God is not, I'm just enjoying the ride. Um, but, but this is what the, the great teachers are saying right now. I love, I mean, we had this conversation last night with one of our um, F90s, which is an uh, online program run. And, you know, instead of being in fear and lacking and scarcity, it's being in love and courage and abundance and gratefulness. So it's like when you wake up in the morning, first thought, I woke up. How amazing is that? My heart is breathing and my heart is beating. How amazing is that? I'm breathing. But the thing is, as Baz said, and he's admitted to, it's all the external stuff we focus on. And now is the time to focus on that relationship with us, which meditation will the give thing, us. The thing is, what I see here is, when we focus on the external stuff, as this has happened, the coronavirus has come in, people's wages, as you say, lost 90%. External things get taken away with a stroke of a pen. Yeah. I can't have it. But when you focus on the internal, doesn't matter how many pen signings there is or 
coronavirus, they cannot take away this in here. Mm. That, that's true power, that is. So, and I, I'm learning it, and I don't think there'll be a day goes past where I'm not learning more about this. And there's no end to this learning. It's a continual cycle of learning, sharing, learning more, sharing. And this is what we do as Rock Solid. This is what Patrick does as well. He's learning this art form and this skill set to share to the rest of the world. Me and Loz are doing it here as well. And that's why we brought Patrick on. So we can share more people, inspire more people and change the world one person at a time. And I think you're doing a fantastic job. Absolutely fantastic. And Patrick, people are loving this. Um, Dawn says, I'm loving this so much. I have chatter in my head. The amount of times I have to unclench my jaw and my tongue <laughs> from the roof of my mouth. Um, and Amanda's saying, I find that when I meditate, I give 100% to me. When making time for other things, um, I make time for me, uh, which is brilliant. Um, so it's, yeah. It's I'm excited amazing. to... Um, so have a little practical shall session. we shall we do it now right we shall do it we shall do it um so guys today what we're going to do is um so, so a methodology that, that i really appreciate is in it, it, it's it's a heart focus breathing and, and and these guys call heart math but this is not heart math this is, this is no one's this is the world's but they put their name on it um and it's a very beautiful technique and guys you know for that analytical mind out there Guys, the NHS used this technique, NASA used this technique, um, Stanford Medical School used this technique. So, so because I, I, I'm not going to get too intellectual on this, but just know that there's 200 peer-reviewed studies on this particular technique, okay? And, and, and now we're going to have an experience. Okay. okay? Do it. Um, guys, just make sure that you will not be bothered. Or because, and this is just we'll take three four minutes that's that's it and what will you you will go into your heart okay so guys closing your eyes taking a deep breath in through your nose out through your mouth just checking in guys where we're feeling today are we a one out of ten are we a two out of ten? Are we a three out of ten? Are we a four out of ten? Are we a five out of ten? Are we a six out of ten? Are we a seven out of ten? Are we an eight out of ten? Are we a nine out of ten? Or are we a ten out of ten? So we're just checking in with ourselves. Not a big breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Now, what are the first four emotions that, that are coming up for you right now? We just want to sit there for a few seconds and see what comes up. I'm excited. I'm calm. I'm happy. A little bit hungry. See what four emotions come up for you. Now, what I want you to do is, I want you to imagine you're breathing in and out of your biological heart. Five seconds in, five seconds out.
If you struggle to feel your heart, feel free to place your left hand on your biological heart. Sensing the shift from thinking to be. Now, I want you to generate a feeling of gratitude and appreciation. Do this by thinking of someone you love, or a beautiful memory you have, or a time when you're in communion with nature. When you're ready, coming back to your body, wiggling your toes, your fingers. And when the time is right for you, you can open your eyes. <laughs> I love that feeling. Nothing else matters. How did you feel? Amazing. Yeah. I was sat up on the top of the hills with you. Of eat, course. Eating Savaloy and chips, watching out over the sea. That's nice. Fancy Savaloy and chips. <laughs> <laughs> no, Barry, that's just your mind. <laughs> There's no other thought process coming into my mind. And I can actually see my heart go. Mm. Filling with oxygen and then relaxing down. Filling with oxygen, relaxing down. Yeah, was, I love it. Guys, if you did that out there, even if you did it live or you're catching up, let us know how that felt for you. But I know for me, just being able to focus on something that made me happy. Ours was in the Maldives when we had our wedding. 
Aww. again. And we felt, do you know what I mean? Just that moment of being there and feeling that love and everything. So yeah, I feel very calm and relaxed now. Very, it's quiet, isn't it? Very guru-like. It feels very quiet. Yeah. Whether that's in my head or just... And guys, it, it, it is good because you're in your heart and there's not the, the BS chatter of the mind. As in, you are saved from that. And guys, it's, it's a very beautiful space. And and, um, and it, it's, you know, if, if you're out there and, and you like, you're about performance and blah, 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 Guys, you do that for 10 minutes before you have to do something special. Oh my God, you will be in the zone. Um, and equally, if you're an anxious person, you cannot be in fear or anxiety when you're in your heart. You cannot, you cannot do it. If you, um, person, I, I like light depression, I can help you with light depression, but with like with deep, deep depression, this is a fantastic technique for them to connect to themselves mm. um, it, it's, it's and they can start the, the emotions can start flowing through again yeah. so yeah. they don't think it's held up anymore um, so it's it's and if you're a formerly angry or you're a fir formerly or currently angry person it's a fantastic technique to open the heart yeah. and create those lines of communication yeah, absolutely. I know when you first said what four um, emotions you're feeling, mine were worry, anxiety, do you know what I mean? And then just in that bit, I was like, oh, you know, and it, it's kind of gone, you know. But even everybody in here has said lovely, it was good, um, but I had to remind myself to focus on being, not doing. Um, that is really good. That was amazing. Big smiles on my face. My happy thought was just a simple hug. I love that. Um, Dawn says, that was brilliant, feeling quite chilled now. And Paula says, never breathed from the heart before. So good to be away from the mind and sitting within love. love amazing. Absolutely amazing. And guys, it's very simple. You know, what do we do today? We close our eyes. As in, I did a bit of a check-in just because, you know, you, you, it's it just just so you can do, see doubly where you're at. And so you can see about, you know, as in, because Barry and all these do like before and afters, right? As in, we had an emotional before and after. Um, but, but you can just do that breathing, that heart-focused breathing, um, and then get, get in, go into a happy place, guys. As in, and, and again, do we really need a scientific study to tell us that it works, or do we just know? You just, know, as in, yeah, in that is we're like, oh well, I need a scientific study and a and a control group to like. We know that when you breathe and when you're in your happy place, you're happy and you're centered. So, so guys, it's about recovering that connection with stuff because you know things, you know so many things and, and and a lot of the work I do is about reconnecting to the intelligence of the heart or intuition uh, as other people call it and um, it's beautiful work, oh my god, I, 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 I love it. I it's love amazing, it. yeah, obviously, yes, thank you so much. I don't really appreciate much, your time Patrick. Patrick, it's amazing. And guys, before we finish off, if anyone wants to get in contact with you Patrick, how do I get in contact with you? Where do you hang out? What do you do? Just tell everybody um, about yourself what they can do to find you. Guys, as in, I'm, I'm a bit low key on stuff, as in, as in, come to my Facebook, as in, the guys are friends with me on Facebook. And um, what I do is, I, I do like one to one sessions with people. I call it meditation in a box. And, and we do an experience like this, and, and we record it, and you have two breakthroughs on a thing. And you have something you can take away and use. Um, or, you know, if Barry and Lars want to organize it, we do one to Manny. Um, and I'd love to do some of the guys as in a, so, so th that's the best way. Because right now, as in, I have an in-person group called um, Dr. Joe Spends a fan meetup group. And, and we, we get like uh, 60 people coming out meditating in person. However, we don't know when that's going to be live again in person. Um, especially because some of our, a lot of our members are probably in the at-risk category. Um, so just so, so in in the meantime, I hold weekly meditation on my on my page. Just ten minutes, just ten minutes of that, isn't just a little bit longer than we did today. Um, 
And uh, yeah, if you want to see my website, it's Patrick Ray, uh, my name, or EA, leadership.com. Um, it sounds like real leadership, which, and it is, um, leading from the heart, guys, leading from the heart. As in, as in, I, I, I'm all about the theme of, the concept of energetic leadership, where I don't have to say anything, I'll just move you with my energy. Yep, I love it. I tell you, I'm putting it out there, I'm putting it out there. When the coronavirus is gone and we are free to socialize again, we're going to organize a mass gathering with Patrick. To <laughs> Welcome to the universe meditation yeah. session. Let's We're going to get this sorted, Patrick. Let's We're going to do, do this, it. okay? Let's do it. But I tell you what, the guys in 365, we might ask you to come and do a group meditation with them. So we might ask you to come in and do okay. that. But, we'll right. have a look. but yeah, absolutely. You know, guys, when this is over, you know, hit up Patrick, go to his thing, but please, you know, head over and support him on his Facebook. He might, you know, I'm sure he'll be able to help you. Do you know what I mean? So. But thank you so, so much. It's been an hour of light bulbs, enlightenment, wisdom, realizations, confirmations. It's been awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Just thank you, Laz. Uh, thank you, Barry. Just to give a shout out to my teachers, as in Swami Parthasarathy. Um, you can find him online. He's a Vedanta teacher. Um, and then that maestro Manuel Rufino. You know, from a golden drum. These are my big influences. Um, if you want to, the true knowledge, I'm, I'm just recycling it. It's just coming through me. But if you want to go to the source, if you want to go there, those are the guys, okay? Oh, Wonderful. Magic. And I that's know amazing. a couple of people have asked about that, so that's superb. Fantastic. Uh, Patrick, you'll have to go back through and read all the comments that are being sent this way. You've got to go through them. So, yeah, it's awesome. So, guys, we are going to end the Facebook Live, and then um, we're going to have a little you know, after, after the show party. party with just us guys. Um, but guys, thank you so much for watching and listening. It's been amazing. Ow, 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 ow.